June 16th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Kings, Chapter 23, from the Old Testament. The king summoned all the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the Lord's temple, accompanied by all the people of Judah, all the residents of Jerusalem, the priests, and the prophets. All the people were there, from the youngest to the oldest. He read aloud all the words of the scroll of the covenant that had been discovered in the Lord's temple. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant before the Lord, agreeing to follow the Lord and to obey his commandments, laws, and rules with all his heart and being by carrying out the terms of this covenant recorded on this scroll. All the people agreed to keep the covenant. The king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the high-ranking priest, and the guards to bring out of the Lord's temple all the items that were used in the worship of Baal, Asherah, and all the stars of the sky. The king burned them outside of Jerusalem in the terraces of Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. He eliminated the pagan priests whom the kings of Judah had appointed to offer sacrifices on the high places in the cities of Judah and in the area right around Jerusalem. They offered sacrifices to Baal, the sun god, the moon god, the constellations, and all the stars in the sky. He removed the Asherah pole from the Lord's temple and took it outside Jerusalem to the Kidron Valley, where he burned it. He smashed it to dust and then threw the dust in the public graveyard. He tore down the quarters of the male cultic prostitutes in the Lord's temple, where women were weaving shrines for Asherah. He brought all the priests from the cities of Judah and ruined the high places where the priests had offered sacrifices. From Geba to Beersheba, he tore down the high place of the goat idols situated at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the city official, on the left side of the city gate. Now the priests of the high places did not go up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat unleavened cakes among their fellow priests. The king ruined Tophith in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, so that no one could pass his son or his daughter through the fire to Molech. He removed from the entrance to the Lord's temple the statues of horses that the kings of Judah had placed there in honor of the sun god. They were kept near the room of Nathan Melech, the eunuch who was situated among the courtyards. He burned up the chariots devoted to the sun god. The king tore down the altars the kings of Judah had set up on the roof of Ahaz's upper room, as well as the altars Manasseh had set up in the two courtyards of the Lord's temple. He crushed them up and threw the dust in the Kidron Valley. The king ruined the high places east of Jerusalem, south of the Mount of Destruction, the king Solomon of Israel had built for the detestable Sidonian goddess Astarte, the detestable Moabite god Chemosh, and the horrible Ammonite god Milcom. He smashed the sacred pillars to bits, cut down the Asherah pole, and filled those shrines with human bones. He also tore down the altar in Bethel at the high place made by Jeroboam, son of Nebat, who encouraged Israel to sin. He burned all the combustible items at that high place and crushed them to dust, including the Asherah pole. When Josiah turned around, he saw the tombs there on the hill, so he ordered the bones from the tombs to be brought. He burned them on the altar and defiled them. This fulfilled the Lord's announcement made by the prophet while Jeroboam stood by the altar during a festival. King Josiah turned and saw the grave of the prophet who had foretold this. He asked, What is this grave marker I see? The men from the city replied, It's the grave of the prophet who came from Judah and foretold these very things you have done to the altar of Bethel. The king said, Leave it alone. No one must touch his bones. So they left his bones undisturbed, as well as the bones of the Israelite prophet buried beside him. Josiah also removed all the shrines on the high places in the cities of Samaria. 
the kings of Israel had made them and angered the Lord. He did to them what he had done to the high place in Bethel. He sacrificed all the priests of the high places on the altars located there and burned human bones on them. Then he returned to Jerusalem. The king ordered all the people observe the Passover of the Lord your God as prescribed in the scroll of the covenant. He issued this edict because a Passover like this had not been observed since the days of the judges. It was neglected for the entire period of the kings of Israel and Judah. But in the 18th year of King Josiah's reign, such a Passover of the Lord was observed in Jerusalem. Josiah also got rid of the ritual pits used to conjure up spirits, the magicians, personal idols, disgusting images, and all the detestable idols that had appeared in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem. In this way, he carried out the terms of the law recorded on the scroll that Hilkiah, the priest, had discovered in the Lord's temple. No king before or after repented before the Lord as he did with his whole heart, soul, and being in accordance with the whole law of Moses. Yet the Lord's great anger against Judah did not subside. He was still infuriated by all the things Manasseh had done. The Lord announced, I will also spurn Judah just as I spurned Israel. I will reject this city that I choose, both Jerusalem and the temple about which I said, I will live there. The rest of the events of Josiah's reign and all his accomplishments are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. During Josiah's reign, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, marched toward the Euphrates River to help the king of Assyria. King Josiah marched out to fight him, but Necho killed him at Megiddo when he saw him. His servants transported his dead body from Megiddo in a chariot and brought it to Jerusalem, where they buried him in his tomb. The people of the land took Josiah's son, Jehoahaz, poured olive oil on his head, and made him king in his father's place. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah, from Libna. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his ancestors had done. Pharaoh Necho imprisoned him in Riblah, in the land of Hamath, and prevented him from ruling in Jerusalem. He imposed on the land a special tax of 100 talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Josiah's son, Eliakim, king in Josiah's place, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. He took Jehoahaz to Egypt, where he died. Jehoiakim paid Pharaoh the required amount of silver and gold, but to meet Pharaoh's demands, Jehoiakim had to tax the land. He collected an assessed amount from each man among the people of the land in order to pay Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Zabida, the daughter of Padiah from Ruma. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, as his ancestors had done. God, I really feel for Josiah. Here he does everything right. He follows your word to a T. Um, he loves you with his whole heart. He is passionate about you. He reinstills all of the all of the rituals that they were supposed to do. Specifically, here it's talking about Passover. Here is a man who is a man of your own heart, passionate about you, passionate about people following you, and yet it still didn't work out. And I think sometimes, you know, we always say, oh, my life is like Job, but I think sometimes it should be, my life's like Josiah, like I'm doing everything right, and yet I'm still getting odd results or persecuted or taken down somehow. <laughs> It feels kind of like that in my life right now at the moment. Uh, I've been hit out at the knees 
by about three three to five different situations almost every day. And here I keep trying to do all the right things for all the right reasons and it's it's just not working. And I think we have to remember uh, that it, that's almost a little bit of a selfish statement. Not that Josiah ever made that statement, but that I make that statement. <laughs> it's almost a little bit selfish to think, gosh, God, I'm doing all these things and I can't, why can't you just make things a little bit easier? I'm doing all this stuff for you. Um, whereas we should realize that it is not all about us. That it is all about you, God. That your plan is way bigger than our blinders are in the world and our selfishness selfishness at just wanting um, one specific thing or one way of doing something and we've got to realize that you are in control it's it's not us every time we try and be in control things just do not work out that you had a bigger plan um, that you were going to punish all of the people uh, for the sins of the many uh, it meant that a few good people, a bit of the remnant, was going to get destroyed in the process. And Josiah did lose his life in that. But it's part of a bigger plan that you have. Not that I'm asking to lose my life tomorrow. <laughs> but understanding that if I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing, that is what you've asked me to do. You've asked me to follow your word. You've asked me to love your people. You've asked me to... Be faithful and obedient in this ministry. Those are all things uh, that I am doing and working really hard and trying to figure out. It doesn't mean I, I don't stumble because I do every day. Uh, but I, I am passionate about you, God, and I love you very much. But help, help me keep in mind that there's a bigger picture here. I'm just such a small, small, small speck on this huge, gigantic timeline of yours that your big picture has to include the totality of that, not my little, little, little tiny speck. Um, there's so much more going on in this world than my own kingdom that I have set up. God, I just love you so much. And I do appreciate your faithfulness, even the times where I think that you're not being faithful and it's me who then has to ask forgiveness for even thinking that. I love you a lot. In your son's name I pray. Amen.